Well, breaking news, California-based SpaceX is about 30 seconds away from blast off for the world's first all-civilian mission. The Falcon and 9 rocket is on the launch pad, and this is at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, Pat. That's right. The four amateur astronauts are inside the capsule at the top of the rocket. They will orbit the Earth for three days as they hope to raise $200 million for St. Jude T Children's Research Hospital. The crew includes Haley Arsenault, a childhood cancer survivor who was treated at St. Jude. She'll be the youngest American to fly in space. Now, if you want to listen in to the countdown, let's do that, shall we? Vehicles pitching downrange. T plus 30 seconds. Pullouts indicate nominal. The Spark mission flame, the Inspiration 4 crew. Onboard Dragon and Falcon 9. Great deal with the crew in the council. Wow. That is amazing. So they do have a uh, successful launch so far. We should say that this uh, crew is made up of a billionaire, Jared Isaacsman. He's the one who financed this mission, and it is to benefit uh, St. Jude's uh, Children's Hospital. It's called the Inspiration Four. I think that's a very appropriate name. I think so, too. It kicks off a 12-minute climb to a 360-mile-high orbit, 100 miles above the International Space Station. It will be the highest anyone has flown since the last shuttle mission to service the Hubble Space Telescope. Pat, that was back in 2009. I'm looking at a view here from the crew, and it looks like they're just sitting back, relaxing, thumbs up all around. That's wonderful. And uh, we should add here, you know, we remember uh, Richard Branson, yeah. uh, Jeff Bezos, of course, uh, going up. But they only traveled about 60 miles or so, um, and they only stayed for about 10 minutes. You know, they, they practiced a weightlessness, but this crew will be gone for three days, and they will be landing in the Atlantic Ocean for splashdown. This is just amazing. You just can imagine the uh, four people on board, all of them civilians, uh, not uh, professional. Yeah. Um, astronauts. We do have some people, uh, a couple who have been like our data engineers um, and uh, mission pilot, but at the same time, they are civilians and, and not it, really trained, but they did train for six months, I understand. Yeah, and it's a fully automated flight, so these yeah. four passengers can just sit back and relax, and what a mission it is. It's uh, devoted to raising $200 million for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, well, and at least one of those passengers on board has a really close connection. I understand they're going to have a, uh, actually a kind of a... Uh, charity event throughout some of this uh, space mission where they raise, raise money for St. Jude. Isn't yeah, that that's Haley Arsenault. She yeah. is a cancer survivor. Now, the other two participated in a contest that Isaacman had yeah. um, to win seats on board this flight. So, again, this is uh, amazing. Another historic launch for SpaceX, the first all-civilian crew. What's interesting, they're going to be above the International Space Station, as you mentioned, about 100 miles, so they'll be, they'll be able to look down through a glass dome of the International Space Station. Pretty amazing and fantastic. Yeah, it took off from Kennedy Space Center just a few minutes ago, about three minutes into the flight. Godspeed to them. No, for sure. Yeah, I was to, do, to be honest, I was saying a prayer all the way as yeah, we watched no. them in liftoff. Kind but, of gives you uh, chills, doesn't it? It really does. Think about what's coming up next because these are civilians, so we're not that far away from just going to the moon on a regular basis or outer space to on a regular basis. If you have the money to go, right? right? Well, but it's going <laughs> to get cheaper be, as time goes on. We hope. Right, but if, <laughs> but at first you're going to have to. Pay. We've already talked about that yeah. in terms of what the other. Uh, Gentlemen would be charging for people to make a that's trip, right. uh, make a trip, but for this to be actually orbiting for for three days, that's a full-on mission, and that's pretty pretty wonderful. Um, just want to tell our viewers out there that this capsule uh, does have a full envelope, and that is an abort system to instantly propel the spacecraft away from a malfunctioning booster. You know that's always nice to know, and if anything happens that. Um, They'll have an emergency splashdown in the Atlantic Ocean. As it stands now, they're supposed to land Saturday in the Atlantic.
And what you saw there just a few moments ago was the, uh, the actual rocket that is going to return back to Earth so they can reuse that. Now we're seeing shots of that capsule. And there it is on the left. That is going to be the actual rocket that's going to return back to Earth and uh, land. And they, they can reuse that. They have a lot of success with that path. There were a few uh, hiccups along the way, but successfully they've been able to retrieve and reuse those uh, rockets over and over again, which saves them a lot of money. It really does. That's yeah. the other important uh, part of this mission besides they're raising money for uh, the St. Jude's cancer research, but at the same time, they're also making uh, inroads into how we operate in space you know, in terms of reusable rockets and uh, other equipment. You know, they're going to carry out a battery of medical tests and experiments throughout the mission. Isn't that interesting that not only are they going to go up there and just see this stuff, they're actually going to do some good up there with some medical tests. All right, let's uh, listen in a bit more here. Just before that view switched, we saw some uh, teammate fist bumps going on there inside of the cabin. <laughs> They look like they're having a fun ride there. Um, and their journey isn't over. We've got about seven more minutes until uh, Dragon separates from the second stage. Yes, uh, next milestone for this mission is actually going to be happening on the first stage. Um, it's going to be performing a re-entry burn that's going to be coming up around the T plus seven minute and um, 30 second mark. Uh, that burn is used to slow down the first stage before it re-enters the denser parts of the atmosphere. Um, a few minutes later, it will execute a landing burn and make an attempt to land on our drone ship that's currently parked in the Atlantic Ocean. Dragon SpaceX trajectory nominal. Dragon copy. So oh, far, sorry. I'm just going to say, so far, everything looking great for the Inspiration 4 crew hearing that everything is proceeding nominally there with the second stage, which is what you see on the right-hand side. That HD it, propulsion is nominal. I was just going to say that MVAC engine uh, we just heard now is looking nominal. About a minute left to go before the first stage performs its uh, first burn. And on your left-hand side, looking at the first stage, you may see uh, those white puffs. Um, those are the nitrogen puffs uh, helping to steer and guide a uh, vehicle, basically. Dragon, SpaceX, I think it's interesting that uh, one of the things that they're going to be exploring is space sickness, <laughs> which, right. you know, I always think about motion sickness just in an automobile or something, but uh, space sickness, I guess that happens, of course, to the other astronauts. So this is something that uh, I guess they'll be getting some full first-hand research. I get motion sickness just looking at him. You know, we need to probably include uh, Elon Musk in this. We're talking about the SpaceX, well, SpaceX founder. Yeah, you have a, I have a quote from him from earlier today about if there was any trepidation. His assurances that the entire leadership team is solely focused on the mission and is very confident, Pat. All right, that's very good. And stay with us here at CBS2. We will be right back.